Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So today we are here to present. Uh, but we are today we are here to present on the topic of introduction to CNN. CNN basically stands for Convolutional Neural Network, and it is presented by me, Ayush Shivastu, and Pranav Bhamik. Pranav, can you next slide? Yeah. So, so, so before starting the session, let's keep in mind that we that we follow a knowledge etiquette that is punctuality. Please join the session five minutes prior to the start session start time so that we can start on time and we can conclude on time. Second is our feedback. Make sure to submit a constructive feedback for all the sessions as it is very helpful for us. The third is silent mode. Keep your mobile devices and other activities on silent and keep your mic unmuted and avoid disturbance. Avoid the avoid unnecessary chit chat during the session and we will be we will be we will be having a we will be having a Q and A panel at the end of the session. Next slide. So for the agenda of our day today, we will be having five topics. So first, we will start with introduction to neural network. What is neural network and its specifics? Then we will be then we will transition to what is convolutions, and then to what is pooling. And in the end, we will we will we will understand what is the importance of pooling and 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 a full demonstration of our image classification and our convolutional neural network. So the first topic: introduction to neural network. It's so introduction to neural network. So basically a neural network reflects the behavior of a human brain, allowing computer programs to recognize patterns and solve common problems in the field of AI and machine learning and deep learning. So as you're familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with uh, biology, so basically it is, it kind of resembles a neuron. So, so that's what is implied. And uh, neural networks are comprised of node layers containing input layer, uh, one or more hidden layers and an output layer. In simple terms, they will, it will contain one input layer, one main layer that will be hidden where all the image processing and everything will be handled. Uh, uh, the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. awesome. So, uh, so, 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 so there will be the middle layer. The, the middle layer will basically handle all the processing and everything, and then in the end, an output will be generated. So each node or artificial neuron connects to another and has an associated weight or weight or a threshold. We will be diving more into it. What is the weight or a threshold uh, later on? So uh, in the end, if the output of an individual node is above the specified threshold value, the node is activated, sending the data to the next layer of the network. Otherwise, no data is passed along. Uh, Along to the next layer of the network. So why this is necessary is because uh, an image classification or a, or a normal machine learning model can contain millions of machine learning uh, nodes and neurons. So so we will be we, we, we will be needing to kind of uh, uh, cut down on some of the training data that is irrelevant. So that's why we apply this. So, so next are you I have a question here. Yeah. In the neural network. Uh, the input nodes that the count of input nodes is it dependent on something like the count of input nodes is like dependent on the number of variables that we are inputting or what is that yeah it can be yeah yeah it is so basically so basically input layer basically basically makes an assumption so in with the input layer, we are basically providing a normal pixel input, pixel and the color RGB input. We will be we will be discussing how the input is provided later on. So basically, it is kind of random, but we will we can we can assign like what type of uh, what type of variables we we decide to feed it to, feed it feed to it basically. Okay, so you are saying that uh, yes, it depends on the number yeah. of input variables. Yeah. For any any like uh, situation. Yeah. For random. Okay. For any situation, we have certain types of inputs and certain types of output we are expecting, right? Correct. So correct. that certain type of inputs are like the num. We, when we create a neural network, then we create the exact number of input nodes, or uh, based on the number of inputs that we have. So based on the number of inputs that we have, or and the inputs can basically reflect the features and stuff. So we will be explaining a little more into it so that you so that we can understand it more. Later on, oh, so wonderful, yeah. wonderful I would love to see it. So, so next slide. Yeah. So here, as you can see, uh, so this is our basic uh, image classification. Suppose we have an image of a cat or a dog. So we will be inputting. Uh, so so our basically our model will be taking assumption and will be inputting different type of features that that can be ears, dogs, basically nose, eyes. These type of features will be inputted randomly, and these arrows that you see, they are these are basically channels, and random weights will be 
will be assigned to them. We will we will go more on depth with weights and what is threshold uh, later on, to, later on in the next slides. And then all these features and images will be will be transferred to the hidden layer, where all the image processing and everything will be done. And in the end, an output will be generated. And and based on the output, it will be it will it will basically uh, it will it will basically be a, uh, basic be a, it will the output will basically be uh, probability output. So it will decide whether uh, if it, if it falls closer to one, it will be decide whether it is a dog, whether it is a cat, or these type of things. Next layer. Okay, just a minute. Can you go back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a question here also. Okay. Sorry if you have invited me. You need to bear with the questions. <laughs> Okay. No problem. No <laughs> All right. So when we say input an image, does this mean that uh, we convert this image into some other like byte format and then input it? Yeah, yeah. So we are basically converting it to a array and we are then inputting it. Okay. So we convert it into some uh, some other yeah. format. Yeah. We are basically fattening. We are basically fattening the image because it is a two-dimensional image. So okay. we are basically fattening it. Uh, we are basically fattening it, and in a in a one-dimensional vector, and then we are basically inputting it, so okay. that our computer can understand it. Okay. Okay. Right. And do we send the labels upfront in this? Is it like a supervised learning? Uh, yeah. Basically, okay. during our during our training process, it can be. Okay. Because 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 during our training process we do define key we do define exactly what our output is whatever everything is so during the training process it can be. Okay okay cool thanks. Next one, Prana. Okay so here you can see more an in-depth view of a neural network. So this, so this is a basically kind of a same image that I have described earlier for the cats and dog, but it is more vividly it is more vividly represented. So we will be having n number of inputs that will be fitted to it. So it, it so the inputs will be one dimensional arrays and then basically we will be passing all the data that are that is coming from our input layer to our hidden layers we will we, we will understand more how we, how we are passing our input layer data to the hidden layer uh, in the in the in the next slide now here we can see the hidden layers can be can consist of multiple hidden layers so so here so this this is the main heavy part of our uh, heavy part of our machine learning model where we will be processing our data and here the model will be trained properly and then in the end deciding on what features to take what features to uh, exclude and these things will be done in the H1, H2, and HN layer, whatever type of layer we have, and then in the end, an output will be generated, and, it be, and whether it will decide what type of classification we need to do, whether it is a dog, cat, or whatever we want to predict. Okay. So, Ayush, one more question here. Come on. Okay. Yes. Sure. <laughs> okay. So, uh, suppose I have a dog image. Okay. Correct. And when you say there would be different inputs, input one to input n. Yeah. Are we saying that these are different uh, uh, dog images, or like we are converting that dog image into different uh, vectors that you were saying earlier? One vector would be say kind of a covering the uh, brightness of the image. One vector, certain specific area pixel uh, pixel related information. Is the is the image one single image will have all these inputs, or like these are inputs based on the number of images? No, it is uh, it is one single image. So like one single image will be containing multiple pixels, multiple vectors, and uh, like each pixel. Because suppose suppose there is an image of 28 by 28 by 28 pixels, right? So it will contain about 789 uh, uh, pixels. So so basically we are feeding, and each each of these pixels can contain uh, different colors, different like suppose uh, a pixel can contain a uh, dog's ears. So mm -hmm. it can be different. So basically, we are feeding a single, we are feeding feeding a singular image, and at that singular image will be trained accordingly. So if we have to give that image as an input to this neural network, yeah. first we will have to create vectors of that image, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, and we we will have to create that, but like Python makes it pretty simple, so we can easily do it. Oh, okay, okay. So we can use Python to convert that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. image into these kind of inputs. And yeah. uh, then the inputs can be fed into your neural network, and yeah. also we can check the output also if they are predicting it correctly or not. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So uh, we don't have to like use our math, math, math formula and stuff here. Got so it, got it, it, got it kind got of it. makes wonderful, it Ayush. Wonderful, good, good. I, I, I could relate it now. Thanks. Okay. Next one. Pranav. 
can you hear me? Oh, Next can you can yeah, you yeah, see me? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Awesome. So, so this is what I was explaining earlier. Suppose, so, so this is kind of a visual representation of. Suppose we are here, we are here uh, predicting uh, three different sets of images. That is, that is a square, circle, and a triangle. So we are feeding it a square image that is 28 by 28 pixels, and you can uh, you, from this 28 by 28 pixels, you can name the individual boxes from 1 to 789, and then you will be feeding all these inputs to the x1, x2, x3. So x1, x2, x3 is basically our input layer. It can be multiple input layers, right? So you will be feeding it, and all of these pixels will be varied. So they will they will contain some different color pattern. They will contain some different color thing, things. You can relate it to the dogs and cats image by like uh, they will have different ears. They will have different eye patterns. They will have different colors. These type of things. And as you can see the channels. So 0 0.8, 0 0.2. This thing, 0 0.1. As you can see here. So these are weights. So some weights are randomly. Uh, so, so at the start of the of the trading, some weights are randomly assigned to it. To see so to basically create the neural network, and some these weights are basically what decides what weightage, uh, what weight is the input of that image is basically considered. So as you can see here, when we when we come to the layer B1, so we will be calculating it through a formula that is basically x1 multiplied by 0 0.8, that is the weight of the layer, then plus x. Okay, can we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, cool. So, uh, so we will be then multiplying it by x3. So, because we are taking also an x3 input and then multiplying it by its weight, and then we will be having a bias. We'll be having a bias, right? And then at that, at and that, at that time, whatever the whatever this function, this mathematical equation generates, we will be passing this value to an activation function, and that activation function will decide whether that node, whether that singular neuron will be activated. So, as you can see, this b1, b2, b3, it will the activation function will decide whether this part this uh, uh, this node will be activated or not suppose the suppose the result comes closer to zero and uh, so and the activation we can decide that it is kind of irrelevant we don't need to process this information and we don't we don't need to waste computing power here kind of in a simple way i'm trying to uh, explain it so basically so we, we so we will discard this layer and we will only uh, we will only feed forward the uh, we will only feed forward or forward propagate the required layers and the required features that are specific to our image so so this is what will happen in the next layer b2 layer and and we can have multiple layers so this is what will be happening and in the end suppose here you can see uh, so this is our first training model and in the end it has predicted it has it is predicted this image as a square so now what will happen it has predicted wrong so this is what this is where our training training comes into play so in training we are providing and uh, we are providing our uh, ml model with a with an original output so it can verify so it can verify the predicted output with a with, a, with its original output so here we it will go and it will see oh no it's uh, oh no so the the image we have, we have predicted is completely wrong so it will go back it will retrain the model uh, it we have, and so the, the retraining process will be kind of similar but the only the only difference will be that the weights that are assigned will be different and the different features different things will be considered into place so that in the end we will arrive we will arrive to the conclusion of circle that's it okay next one so the third is introduction to cnn so this is basically so so we will be having the introduction to CNN. So, so this, so that was the basics and everything that our CNN basically works on. So, you need to understand uh, that neural networks concept basics. So, let's go move. On. Next slide. So the convolutional neural network or CNN for short is a specialized type of neural network model that is designed for working with two dimensional image data. As I've told you earlier, like two dimensional data, we will be converting into an array. A one, a one dimensional array that is a vector space, and then we will be basically processing that image data. And a convolutional neural network or CNN is a deep learning neural network stretched for processing structured arrays of data such as portrayals. So basically, kind of similar thing. Basically, we are basically converting the pixels and then we are processing the image. And a convolutional neural network is a feed forward neural network. So it is basically, we, as you can see earlier, that we were feeding the hidden layer one to hidden layer two. And so we are basically forward, forward propagating it so uh, so that so that is what is mentioned as feed forward neural network okay so ayush one question here yeah if we just keep on doing feed forward okay, and yeah. uh, if we are seeing that the results are not improving yeah do we do anything special 
no so basically uh, that the that the beauty of the neural networks right so it basically says ki like uh, uh, oh the output that we have predicted is wrong it verifies uh, it verifies it and then we basically can back propagate it okay so, so that's yeah. what i was asking a question in last statement it is written it is a feed forward neural network only y yes 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 doesn't it have a back propagation thing no it, it does have it does have but like the thing is it, it 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 doesn't kind of work in a similar way to uh, it. It it doesn't basically work in a similar way as RNN. So basically, I'll explain. It. So basically, what happens is like we we did uh, we have assigned some weights and something is predicted wrong. Then mm -hmm. the neural network basically goes back and does the same process again. And then it basically predicts whether and it basically tries to get closer to the actual output, actual mm -hmm. prediction. Okay. and because we have multiple sets of images provided so it can basically retrain on those okay. it can keep training and keep basically learning okay okay good next one so what is convolutions yeah next one next one right. so so what is convolutions so it is basically the main layer that will be identifying that will that will identify the different features of an image so as you can see uh, cats dogs they have different eyes they have different sets of ears they have different uh, leg length you can say so these are different type of features or colors specifically so these are different type of features and the convolutions is uh, so basically the convolutions is at the center of uh, our convolutional neural network this is the layer that will be identifying these features so basically the hidden layers that we are mentioning earlier so these are basically called convolutions so uh, so so it is very central to the convolutional neural network and uh, and it is what that gives it's the name of the convolutional neural network the innovation of convolutional neural network is the ability to automatically learn a large number of filters in parallel specific to a training data set under the constraints of an specific predicted to an specific predictive modeling problem so whatever the predictive modeling problem is such as image uh, such as whatever classification cats and dogs or whatever like number classification or anything we can be basically we can basically do it through convolutional network now uh, now we get the most specific features from the input image required for classifications doing this uh, process and it is it is very specifically used for image classification process uh, next one so here as you can see kind of demonstrated in a visual way ki we are basically have doing a number classification here and uh, it the convolution layer one so these are basically kind of your, uh, your hidden layers and they will be they will be determining the features of the image suppose you have eight as an input so so you can ask like what is the basically the feature that that the uniqueness that defines an eight so you it can be the two the that the, the two loops that are present the two circles that are present so so our our machine learning model of the convolutional net neural network will be will start to function and basically the convolutional layer 1 2 and 3 will start, will basically try to find the pattern and try to basically uh, find the pattern and the feature so that it can correctively predict if an input is given and uh, basically give a prediction whether it is what whatever number it is okay next one Okay, thank you, Ayush. Uh, yeah, I'll take on from here. So, sure, sure. We have now learned a bit about neural network and the uh, convolution, and it's and it's really great. Like using convolution for image classification is uh, really helpful. But the thing is, the convolution alone cannot do everything, and the accuracy might vary or might not be that great. So, it is suggested basically to use the pooling layer with the convolution layer. so what is pooling layer is basically a pooling layer basically reduces the map feature map which is there so let's say we have a input of a dog or a cat and there are multiple features which we have on a dog let's say a dog has a nose a uh, different kind of ears so the feature map help us to like identify the particular feature of that or like particular image and the pooling layer what it does is that reduces that feature map and we can just take up single identification of the pooling Uh, of the feature, uh, so basically it help us to the compress compress the image and help us to process our neural network better. So, if I say it's like uh, the image, so that the number of computation of the networks are reduced, 
also it helps us to down sampling the the by reducing the size of and sense the important data to the next layer of the convolution the pooling layer also operates upon each feature map safely to create a new set of same, same number of pool feature maps yes so this is basically the why uh, pooling layer is used pooling involves selecting a pooling operation much like filter to be applied to feature maps uh, i know uh, it sounds a bit complex to understand here we'll we'll try to simplify it in the in a uh, future so this is a simple uh, uh, like identification of how the pooling works so you can see here there are like four into four grid and we are, we are converting into a, it a two into two grid so what pooling it does if we are like using a max pooling method it takes this four and it will identify the maximum maximum number so for this one we see the seven is the maximum number it will just take this seven for the next layer next hidden layer for this uh, box we can see two nine one and five the nine is the biggest number and it will take the nine as a feature for the next layer and it will just avoid all these three so what how does it help is to is it does help, it helps in like performing a new network better and it like help us in reducing the size of the picture itself okay so why use pooling with convolution is like there is a limitation of feature map output of convolution layer is that they record precise position of the feature in the input so what does this mean if we are like providing a certain image of a dog uh, and it's looking towards the right side there might be a problem like when we are using convolution and we have we provide an input of a dog which looks towards the left or towards up or down it might have a problem to identify that image we can use augmentation as well for that but since we have the pooling layers it also help us to do the same this means the small movement in the position in the feature map or the input will result in a different feature map exactly the same thing which i just said this can happen by recropping rotating shifting and minor changes to the input image right so we have seen, we have listened to our pooling how pooling was let's see what does it mean so here we have a, a image of a parrot and you can see the first image is looking towards the right the second image is directly looking towards the camera itself we can we can also have three multiple parrots as well and when you are creating a convolution neural network it should identify all these as parrots it should not be like okay we cannot identify these three birds it should not be like that it should identify all of these four as a single parrot and you can see if we see a parrot you can see there is a red peak and it should identify what uh, pooling help us it will just take this uh, peak as a single feature and it will check for this feature for all the other other three uh, images basically so that there, there should not be any problem like okay we cannot identify this image or we are wrongly identifying this so like here we can see so let, let's say we have taken this pooling method you can see five three zero and two we have basically taken the maximum number from here and we have created a two by two smaller uh, pooling for the next hidden layer so we, we this can be done as well the thing is if we, if we rotate this uh, blocks box as well it should be automatically detecting this peak as as itself it should not be like uh, detect, detecting it as a like maybe a, it's palm or maybe it's a body something like that so that's why we prefer using the pooling with convolution okay so now we go for applications of cnn uh, CNN are used widely nowadays, uh, basically with the image processing and classification. Nowadays, it's quite famous there. So decoding facial recognition, yes, nowadays we are like like identifying people uh, face, face, face with the CNN models. If you want to like see an example, just go to your Google Photos. It will now so show us a solution like, okay, do you know this person or not? And if you just uh, like label that person as your friend, it will automatically detect all the images from your gallery and uh, show the picture of that particular person. So it has been very popular on that path. Analyzing documents as well. Yeah, nowadays we can also analyze documents, understanding climate changes, advertising, and understanding gray areas. So gray areas basically means when we have different shades of gray. CNN is also quite comfortably able to understand those different gray areas as well. So these are quite few of the applications where the scene are getting used and it's getting famous delivery. Okay, so now, now, now we have that understand a bit about convolution and pooling. Let's see how a model um, actually is made for the for this one. 
This is just a snippet which we are, we are going to see in the demo as well as to how our model is made. You can say we, we are using TensorFlow Keras for our model building. And in this, we, you can see we have used a combination, two combination layers and two pooling layers. Basically what we are doing here, if we, our input is into 64 pixels, we are taking this as an input and uh, like making our first layer as a convolution layer. And we are setting as activation as real, which is basically a uh, rectified linear activation function, which basically means that if the input is right, it will directly return as positive, otherwise zero. The pooling layers basically helps to dimension, dimension reduce the layer. So if this is 0 or 64, it will just reduce that into the further uh, like layers. And we are basically using two convolution and two pooling layers for this one. And then, then we are basically flattening and then seeing, uh, like our end layer, we have like, if we have 10 outputs defined, so we'll just get the 10 outputs set. So, so or, or if we see, we'll see why this is 10 as to in the demo. So, okay. So let's get into the demo part. Okay. Before going with the convolution directly, I'll just like to show how you can build a normal convolution, uh, normal neural net network itself. So we are basically trying to make a linear regression model here. If you see, we are basically assigned this number, numerical numbers to each of the numbers here. So one represent 50, two represent 100, three represent 150, and something like that. So basically a linear regression problem. And we are basically want, we basically want to to build this model. So we'll do a model of fit and we'll run it for thousand iterations. And let's see if it's how many it has run. Okay, so it has run all the thousand iterations. Now, if we want to predict any number here, let's say I want to predict uh, 11, let's say. So according to the model, it's predicting 549.125. Now you might ask like, why it's not identifying it as complete 550. The thing is like mo uh, uh, any model which we are making through Europe, it will be not accurately precisely 100% accurate, but it will be somewhat around more than 90% always, depending on the input and how you have built your model. So this is how you can build a simple neural network and you can try it yourself as well. Now going into the convolution, let's go here. I'll just, uh, I'll just clear everything. Okay, let's go. Let's see, for this uh, demo, we have basically used uh, MNIST dataset. This is basically having 60,000 pictures of 10 classes of floating. So what does it mean is like, we have 10 classes of floating. It could be shoes, it could be pants, jeans, it could be uh, sandals, anything. And we have basically, basically we have this dataset from Keras itself, which will help us to use the convolution neural network itself. Now, what we have done is basically we have loaded our images here. Now we are going to basically divide it into training and uh, images and test images with its labels. Now, if you see it here clearly, you can see with our training images, we are also passing the training labels, which means that for each training image, we have a label defined itself only. So once we load the data set here, now we'll try to like, I'll try to show an image here. So this training image, and I'll just print the label what's how, how is it labeled? So you can see here, this is a shoe grayscale image, and you can see the label has been given as nine. Let's change this to something else. Let's say 50. If we want to see the image with at 58 position. You can say this is, a, we can be identified as an address, and it's being labeled as number three. So there are total 10 labels here. So if we, if you guys want to try, you guys can try it as much as you want. You can see there are many of them. See, this is also a dress and you can see the label is three. So we have this data set defined. Now let's see how you can make, create a simple normal neural network for this one. So we have, what we have done is basically we have take the training images and test images and we have done some pre-processing here. And then we have created a model here, which is just a simple layer of a flattened dense of 128 pixel and we, we have the output layer as to 10 which means we are basically identifying from the 10 labels as to which label that might be so let's build this model we are running it for five epochs only 
and just look at this accuracy, how it's increasing, like one iteration at a time. You can see we started from 78% and it ended in at the 87%. So this is the final accuracy, accuracy which we received with this simple neural network. Uh, now we can see, now let's see how we can add the convolution on top of this simple neural network. So you can see here we have done the same things except we have just added two layers of uh, convolution and two layers of pooling here. So what does it does? Uh, like we are now we are basically taking the convolution and we are asking the convolution here to identify the features, best features, and the pooling is basically re resizing them and reducing the maps. And if we run this one for the same number of iterations, you can see here, just observe that how we, when, whenever we are using the maximum, how the input shape is getting reduced here. From 26, it's been reduced to 13. From 13 now, the next convolution when we are going, it has been reduced to 11 and then five. So when we are going, when we are trying to uh, use this flatten, dense and our output, we have basically reduced our shape to five into five into 64, which is 1600 only. While early it was, it was a bit more. And this convolution list will take some time more than our simple neural network because there are more number of uh, hidden layers here. So yeah, once it all, once all the epochs run, you will see the accuracy here and it should be better than what we have here. So meanwhile, we, this is running. If anyone has any question, can ask. So uh, run of this pooling concept, right? Uh, for a particular region, it identifies the best spot like the which has the maximum weightage for example in your previous the slides which you show nine right, it right. Up. so does right, it right. Uh, for the beak for example it is a kind of a like orange or red whatever like that uh, area is so is it does it pick up the maximum weightage of that area to right, exactly. group it as a like this would be the spot where the nose kind of a shape would be there Right, pooling you can either take maximum. You can even you can even also take the average as well. So it depends on what kind of uh, network you want to make. But, but the our, our, our like final outcome should be when we are identifying this peak, it should like identify this peak as a single feature. And whenever it sees this feature might be here or might be here, it should like readily able to identify this is a peak and it should not identify it as some something else. That's the main okay. use of pooling. Okay, and it can go for like all the features of, for example, in this image palette. Exactly. It, it could be for eyes, it could be for neck, it could be for right. uh, pass also, and all that, right? Exactly. Right. You can see here if we compare this image with this image, you can see the the percentage of the area which we have for this palette, palette is quite less than this one mm -hmm. or this one. So mm -hmm. it should not be like that. Like it could not identify this this one as well. Whenever we see those features, we should be readily able to identify, okay, this is a parrot. Might be the dimension in this percentage area of this image is less, but it's a parrot. Mm -hmm. That's the our final aim. Yeah, okay, okay. And uh, does it, like, the, I think you showed is the application is where we can use this kind of a uh, convolution-based model. Uh, is it all related to images or like this can be used for some other purposes also? Like the one, one example you gave is like climate uh, stuff also we can use. Yeah, basically convolution nowadays is basically used with our image classification, mostly with image classification because it has been successful on that one. Yes, for, even for the climates itself, there are many parameters for climate which mm -hmm. might be precipitation and something others like humidity and temperature and all. And right. what it does for the climate itself as well, it's try to take all those inputs and it tries to best outcome as to when will the rain will, might come or might be a thunderstorm, something like that. But yeah, mostly nowadays, if you go, you know, CNN are mostly used for our image classification. Facial mm -hmm. recognition has been a very famous part of the CNN. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. Out, of, out of context, like, uh, can you share offline some some model which would be best suitable for climate identification? Of uh, which? Yeah, sure, sure. I will share something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so our model has, has been built. So this one is for convolution. It shows an accuracy of 981. Did I rank wrong? 
It should so be more than that. Earlier it was somewhere fifty, right? No, no, it was eighty-seven. I think okay, eighty-seven. Is that has it reduced by now? Yeah, uh, uh, it should be more than ninety. I think there might be yeah. some issue. That's no problem. Idea. No problem. We can understand that. At the demo time, it happened. It's increasing, still increasing. It's still working, or you have run again? I I run it again. Ah, okay, okay. Let's see. Or maybe the data set has changed. <laughs> In some <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I have no idea. It But happens. Yeah, demo time sometimes is a demo, right? <laughs> it's a surprise time always. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not a development time. <laughs> So if everybody understand Hindi, sir, my machine was running, but now it's not running here, right? <laughs> even even the last last night it was more than ninety. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. No worries. Wonderful, wonderful guys. Like I could even as a layman, I could understand what what are you trying to explain. Yeah, wonderful, yes. wonderful way of explanation, guys. Both of you, Ayush and Pranav. Thank you. Okay, let's wait for a couple of minutes. One, one second. Yeah, maybe let's back. not let's not wait for it because uh, ultimately we know that it is going to give you a better uh, outcome, right? Right. Regardless of the accuracy, we can yeah. just predict this. Okay, let's pause this and wait. No issues. Let's see. So let's go go with the prediction itself for the sum of the test image. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have basically uh, added our test image to our prediction. Now let's say we want to like of what we let's see for a particular image. Let's see this image at position hundred. Let's see what our test image shows and what is it, its label. So you can see this is a dress dress and it's been labeled as three. Now let's predict try to predict this one here. We have basically tried past this prediction with this number, and let's say if it's able to predict this and all that. You can see it's coming as wrong prediction. We have basically reduced not run this complete accuracy part. But yeah, once we run, it should be appearing completely. Uh, okay. Okay. I have to run this model again, otherwise it won't predict accurately. No problem. No problem. We can understand that. So now, jadi difference आ गया demo time में और practice time में. Nine ninety two से सीधा eighty one. That's okay, guys. We do understand this. That's not an issue, right? We uh, we should be just understanding the concept, like how convolution works and how the pooling thing works and how the pooling thing is. predicting it but in a much better way yeah we can see that in demo it might have not given the correct result but eventually this helps to improve the accuracy exactly that's the yeah main outcome of the condition sure 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 okay let's uh, if if you guys can wait let's wait for a couple of minutes and let's see anything else on your slide side you want to explain or like all done I think on the slides we are pretty much done, except we have some of the reference where we have taken our material from. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want, you can also look into these areas in the deep learning area from Coursera. This is basically Coursera course, oh, machine okay. learning mastery, and towards data science as always here. Sure. Can you share the actual links on the uh, all order as in reply to that? Uh, sure, sure, sure. That message we are this. Session was defined. Definitely, yeah. Sure, that would be great. So Pranav is saying, "Come on, increase the, <laughs> increase the accuracy, right? Eh? Don't put me into spot." Oh, nothing getting done. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. All right, guys. I think my, if nothing else, my I would be like taking an off. I have to jump to another one. Okay. You Thank you. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank uh, you, sir. Good guys. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Ayush and Pranav, but we have another session lined up. Can you please uh, wrap? 
this session up. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. We are also yeah. waiting on the code yes. part. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll just send this on. Uh, or something. Okay. I use and pranav let's conclude this session i guess because it will take time to get run this model yeah. yeah okay and yes i guess the demo part will not be done it will take some time so no worries i guess okay uh, so guys thank you for attending for thank you for attending the session if we if you guys have any questions feel free to ask right now if you have uh, in, in like the next minute or so because we are running a bit late or if you have some other questions that we want to uh, you want us to answer so you can personally dm us and we will be uh, we will be all like we will be like all hands to answer your questions and your queries so do we have any questions right now Okay, so I guess I'll take it as a no. Uh, all right. So thank you for attending, and thank you, Pranav. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Aishwarya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.